Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video I want to talk to you about, yeah, RC cars. Well, what does RC cars have to do with vintage Volkswagens, Chris? Well, I'm going to tell you and I'm going to go back in time a little bit to my time growing up in the 1980s when these things were hot and I'm going to tell you that if it wasn't for these cars, I probably would not have my business today. And uh, one thing I want to point out this, uh, this year, this month, uh, we're in March of 2019, and somebody very dear to my heart, someone very close to me, uh, would have been 100 years old this month, and that was my grandfather, my poppy on my dad's side. Uh, my grandfather served in uh, World War II, and he worked on the fighter planes, the bombers, when they came back uh, in England. Um, so he was very handy back then. And uh, when I grew up, he was by my side all the time. He came to all my Little League games. He came and sat with me to build these cars. And it was at the time where I learned to be handy, to learn about suspension, to learn about electronics, to learn about using a screwdriver, using a wrench, uh, gluing things, welding things, soldering things. Um, it was an amazing time of my life. And I think there's a disconnect today with a lot of kids and it's a shame that uh, they're not using their hands anymore. And I think it goes, I, I started getting back into these things just a couple months ago. My dad was telling me, hey, take them off the shelf. Let's get back into these things and get them running again. Because I got nieces and nephews and they're little. Uh, I've been an uncle eight times, but I got uh, three young ones right now uh, from my younger sister. And they're getting interested in these things. So I figured, let me get them going for them. Well, sure enough, they, I wound up jumping in on these cars and I probably dropped 500 bucks on a Saturday. I came into work to work on just these and I was jumping on eBay to get these things up and going again because I needed new electronics, new batteries and things like that. So I got sucked into it and uh, it's a beautiful thing and uh, it's been nostalgic. I'm going back in time just like when customers come into my shop, they're going back in time when they look at uh, the Volkswagens. So uh, very cool uh, to jump back into these things and uh, it's, I feel like a kid again. And just like when people come in and they want to sit in a Volkswagen or drive a Volkswagen, they feel like a kid again growing up. And uh, I think it's something that's missing uh, from today's society to some degree. So uh, I'm going to get behind the camera and uh, show you what I have. So before we get going, please be sure to like this content, subscribe to my channel, share this page, get it out there on your social media outlets, and let's get the word out there and get it way out there when it comes to the vintage Volkswagen scene at Classic VW Bugs. And in the description below, there's a small link to a PayPal donation page. If you don't mind, for the price of a cup of coffee, you could throw us a couple bucks to keep this content coming week after week and to help you guys fix your beetle. Uh, whatever you can afford is fine with us and we appreciate it, we thank you. So, I think we should start off with, this is my little arsenal right now, as you can see here, but I think, let's start off with the beetle because we are in a beetle shop and this is the Tamiya Monster Beetle. I actually just started resurrecting this little bad boy and I painted up the shell, put new stickers on it, new tires, new rims, uh, new battery electronics, new shocks, as you can see, new electronic speed controller, and a uh, vintage motor that I threw in there called the Speedworks 350. Uh, this is one of my first cars that I built, and again, my grandfather would come over either after school or on the weekend, Saturday or Sunday, and help me build these cars. These cars came as kits, and you had to build them. It came with great instructions, and uh, they taught you about electronics and motors and brushes in the motors and uh, you know um, transistor radios and, and things like that so it was a great way to learn and I got hands-on you know uh, with my grandfather as we were putting these things together and learning and at the same time as we were building these things we were also working on Lionel trains um, I have Lionel train sets way back from when my grandfather had them when he was young and then he passed them down to my father and then my father passed it down to me, and then I was working on them even recently with my nephews. So uh, back at a time when we were didn't have cell phones, we didn't have beepers, we didn't have email, we didn't have computers, so we got our hands into things like this. And we went from 
vintage RC cars like this, to skateboarding, to building go-karts, to working on trains and such. So um, it's a wonderful thing and uh, it's nostalgic to me because I'm going back to my youth and now I know how you guys feel when you come in here and you want a bug built like this. Same experience. Um, you guys actually have a physical item that you can sit in, smell, touch, drive. So I do get a sense of that. This is uh, Kyosho. Instead of Tamiya, there was Kyosho. Tamiya was one of the first uh, companies I worked with here to build, and then there was Kyosho. This truck was a step up in the game because it had two motors. So that was big time. Oh my God, two motors, four-wheel drive, four-wheel steering. So there was a learning curve there. A little more complicated to build, but not as durable. Every time you ran this thing, either an axle or a dog bone popped out. Something broke, it was, uh, you know, these are all plastic, so. And then, this is the Blackfoot. Uh, this is very similar to the Monster Beetle. Just a different body on top. And then here's the Double Dare. I had this one first before the USA One that you see here. Basically, these are the same trucks, two motors, same electronics pretty much, same drivetrain, that sort of thing. Um, but again, a, another learning curve because it had two motors and four-wheel drive, four-wheel steering, that sort of thing. And then I upgraded to this. This was like a big step up. A uh, cousin of mine was very much into these cars. This was more pro level. Uh, this is a Lozy uh, buggy. And this was the big step up when it came to speed and uh, ergonomics and uh, durability and um, just the engineering in general was uh, a lot better than uh, the trucks that were more for uh, beginners. Uh, this was a definite step up here uh, with technology. So, but you know, as I started getting back into this, I'm getting sucked into it. I come here on the weekends or I stay after work and I start working on these things and I'm driving them outside. So uh, it's amazing how you can get sucked into an old hobby or an old, um, you know, an old thing you used to do back in the day. So we used to ride bikes, we used to build go-karts, go skateboarding, go fishing and, Tell my parents, I'll see you later. I'm going to go call for my friends. And there was no cell phone connections. This was at a time when, uh, you know, we still survived, right? So, but um, as I'm doing all this and as I'm reminiscing with my grandfather, because it seems like it's all perfect timing that he would have been 100 this year. And uh, I started getting back into these. Um, you know, Google monitors you, right? So when you start doing this kind of work and it sees what you're doing, it then throws other links and imagery at you on the sidebars or underneath. Hey, what about some of the new stuff? Check this out over here. Come click on this link and see what you think. And that's when I got sucked into these two guys. These are brand new this year, 1-8 scale monster trucks. Now, the only downside to these trucks is that they come ready to run. It seems like everybody today just wants it ready to run. I built these from ground up, okay? But these, they come ready to run. It seems like no one has the patience anymore to bring them in basically and, and build them. There's something to building things. Just like when you build a Beetle, I build these cars as a personal connection to it. You know what goes into it. You know all the nooks and crannies. You know all the nuts and bolts and screws and and things and you have a, an emotional connection to it. These on the other hand, as cool as they are, I love them to death. Um, I still keep going back to the older cars uh, to run and get them up and running and as much as I keep running them and they keep breaking, I still keep going back to them to get them to run again. Uh, these, as fun as they are, and I love them, uh, you know, the, the connection is not the same, but I do have to say the technology in today's cars, these RCs are just phenomenal. Um, out of the box, these cars are about 40 to 50 miles an hour. You could put better batteries in them and they can go up to over 60 miles an hour. Um, these two cars right here, this is the DHK, which I never heard of that company before, DHK Maximus. And this is the Red Cat Landslide. Supposedly these two companies are very popular today over the earlier companies I used to work, uh, work on. Um, I will tell you these cars are, if you're not experienced, they're, they could be dangerous. Um, you ram this into somebody's leg, it's going to hurt like hell. If you have a small dog in front of this car, it'll most likely kill the dog. Um, or maybe even a small child, I don't know. <laughs> uh, 
This car I ran the other day for the first time, and when you hit the throttle, this thing goes up in the air, and these tires in the front turn to, quote unquote, they call them pizza cutters. So like, it's it literally the tire balloons and gets thin. And it's in the air and it's spinning so fast, it looks like blades on the front. It looks like it could just chop you up. It can eat you. That's how crazy these cars are. So anyway, guys, uh, just a video. I know a little bit of a curveball off, off the beaten path of the Volkswagen stuff, but you know, if I did not work on these cars, if I, when I was younger, I probably would not have had an interest in working on cars at all or Volkswagens or vintage stuff, you know, uh, there's something special to that, and uh, I attribute that to my grandfather, who was always by my side to, to help me build these things, and he was handy. He made me handy, get creative. Um, you know, even when it came to the Lionel train set, so we would build, we, he would build all the homes and the schools and the windmills that we would have, all out of balsa wood, and he would make the wood floor and the schools and all the little desks, and on each desk he would have a little pencil and paper. On each little desk he did that all by hand. Uh, it's something that's kind of missing today, and it's a shame because uh, even in some schools today here across the country, they're getting rid of shop class and wood class and metal class, which you know I think is uh, beneficial not only to your skill level but to your psyche and your mindset. Um, it's uh, very therapeutic to do things by hand as opposed to getting caught up in the digital stuff. You know, maybe I'm dating myself, but uh, anyway. So if you like this video, uh, please leave your comments below. And um, I'm hoping to um, maybe get a running video of these, some of these cars for you guys and see what you guys think. And, you know, maybe it's another avenue we can add into an addition to classic VW bu Bugs, uh, especially with this guy, the Monster Beetle. Very cool that uh, it's, a, it's a Beetle, right? It's a Volkswagen. So, all right, guys. Till next time. Take care. Uh -huh.